In this video I'm going to show you how to use the Modbus PLC simulator to pass data between two completely separate copies of SpecView. Uh, the Modbus PLC simulator can be downloaded from here, I'll put the link in the comments below the video. So you don't need to read the tiny writing at the top there. Um, I have the Modbus simulator running, it's here, and I have a team viewer window on another PC in the building, this is a Windows 8.1 PC and I'm going to run SpecView on my PC as kind of like the master, not that it matters. So let's fire up SpecView and set up a little configuration. Uh, I'm going to call this project String Testing. Let's make it a bit smaller so that we can see all sides. Okay, in our generic Modbus driver which we got from the templates list generic modbus there is some generic strings and I'm going to create the first string string A at this is the address of my computer 192.168.126 slave address 1, decimal place is 1 not that it matters and an offset of 0 which means that this string will be coming from address 0 over here in the Modbus simulator. So I'm going to create that string. It's popped into existence here. Uh, there's already something in it that I was playing with earlier. We'll come back to that in a minute. If you want another string you have to use a different offset so that it appears in a different place. Now, since the biggest string in here can be 128 bytes I'm going to create one with an offset of 128. So here is string B same address, 1, 2, 1, 6, 8, 1, 26, one decimal place, now an offset of 128. Create. OK, let's pop that on the screen. So, uh, I'm going to grab out the 128 byte strings of string A and string B. That seems to be a bit of a mess. Oh, there we are. I think that's the recording software. Uh, let's put all this stuff over here. Make it a bit bigger. Make that one a bit bigger. Woo! Okay. So if in here I enter lots of A's, it'll be obvious because those over here in the Modbus simulator have turned up here and in the second string which was offset by 128 if I type in a lot of B's and over here we'll see they appear starting at 128 in the memory map. In a similar way you could create as many strings as you like using the huge memory map of this Modbus simulator or you could use different slave addresses and have one string in each slave address or whatever. Anyway, there's, There is scope for many thousands of strings quite easily. Uh, the three subparts of the generic Modbus string are uh, a 32 character string, a 64 character string or a 128 character string just for no real reason other than to keep strings short to make the messages shorter. So here are two strings which we've written to the Modbus simulator on this PC. If I save this project call it example spell that wrong and exit on this restart spec view I'm now going to copy this configuration from my PC to the other PC I called it string testing so I'm just going to use the cheat method of copying it by just copying the folder if I can find it. OK, found it. So I'm going to copy this whole folder, string testing, and I'm going to put it on the other PC in a similar kind of folder, paste. So that's now there. So let's go online to this one on my PC. Let's make it small again. That's sitting there. I don't need this explorer. So 
here's my other PC. So make that a bit bigger. Uh, there's the Modbus simulator still running. So let's run up spec view on this other PC. And go for stream testing. And when we go online, we'll see it's got the same A's and B's. So now, if I go over here on spec view and type in the left string, you'll see that after a short while that appears over here. And here is the right string, spelt wrongly, and that will appear over here. The update rate is low because I've told it to be low. That can easily be changed by editing the dynamic attributes of something. So you can see that strings are being passed bi-directionally, it doesn't matter which one you type in, that string will appear on the other spec view. So for example you could type a batch number into this spec view and this spec other spec view over here would get the same batch number because they're both being passed through the Modbus simulator. Uh, one final thing to uh, address is that um, most computers these days have firewalls on so you need to let this program be accessible through the firewall and this is how you would do it. This is Windows 7 so my computer is Windows 7, that is the computer running the simulator, that's the computer you need to do this on. It's Control Panel, Network and Sharing Centre, Windows Firewall at the left at the bottom here, Advanced Settings, Inbound Rules, Create a New Rule, a Rule is for a port, because we need to open port 502 which is Modbus, so we have a port, it's a TCP port, and it's going to be port 502. Next, we want to allow the connection on port 502. Next, um, all domains, private and public network is fine. Give it a name, allow mod plus TCP simulator traffic. Spelled wrongly. Uh, when I click finish, I'll, that will create the rule. Now I've already done this, so I'm not actually going to do it, but that's how you do creating the rule to allow the external computer, as in this second computer, to get through the firewall on this computer to access this server. Um, to prove that they're both talking simultaneously through this server, one of the things that the Modbus simulator can do is zero all the values, and if I click this, all the strings will disappear from both spec views. So there we have it. That will allow you to pass batch numbers or any kind of numbers um, using the generic Modbus from one to another. Thanks!